Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about Silky Gomboy 210 and in this particular video we're going to be looking at the curved professional saw and I think I've gotten just a little bit of use on this guy, just a little bit to know what I think of this tool and by a little bit I mean a lot bit. I've really been going to town using the absolute heck out of this guy and playing with it, seeing how it works, seeing how well it's built and how well it holds up. So without any further ado, let's jump into the Silky 210 Gomboy and I'm going to tell you what I think about this little thing. So by far this is a saw that is not perfect. I don't think that there are a lot of saws that are perfect, but when you look at tools you have to think not necessarily is this tool perfect, but can this tool work for me? And I think that that is where the Gomboy goes really well, at least for me and at least in my experiences. Now I've been using the um, I've been using the Baco Laplander for quite some time now, as many people do. It's a very great entry pocket saw that will fit in a pocket, and I still love the Baco Laplander by all means. It's a great tool. Um, there's really no complaints about it, and it is slightly more durable than the Gomboy. But the things that I enjoy about the Gomboy through my use are a few things. The first is that because these teeth are cut higher up into the saw blade, that means that there's ultimately more blade doing more work. And even though this is a pull cut saw, so it only cuts on the pull, it still does a tremendous amount of work. And as I'm rolling in footage, you'll be able to see that this thing is an absolute monster. It just obliterates wood and cuts through things very fast. And even though I probably shouldn't, I've even used this for lightly or light felling of trees. Uh, you know, I felled, I think about a two and a half inch tree with this guy and it just absolutely ate through that birch tree with no problems. And of course it was a dead standing birch tree, but it was in that kind of death where it wasn't dead or rotten yet. It was still integral, but you, it was dead enough where you could walk by and see the tree clearly dead, but it is standing and still structural. So this this thing was fairly, the tree was fairly live and, um, you know, it hadn't been completely dead at that point. But this tree, this tree, this saw did an absolute number on it and really did a good job. And in addition to that, I mean, speaking to the testament of this saw, uh, you know, this fire reflector beside me, this uh, shelter kind of cover, this shelter kind of cover behind me was not necessarily entirely built with this saw, but uh, when you see these different pieces of wood have been sawed, they were sawed by this saw in particular. And once again, you know, with this fire reflector, these pieces of wood were sawed, sawed with this saw. So these pieces of wood were bucked with this saw. And the biggest thing I have to say that really impresses me is we all know that the Silky is, you know, a fast saw. We know that it cuts very well and that it does a very good job. But I think the thing that impresses me most about this saw is its capability. And what I mean by this is that, you know, this is a saw that fits in a cargo pocket, you know, cargo pant pocket. You can throw this in there and by and large forget about it. But yet when you come to pull it out, the first thing for me is I was a little bit hesitant to actually use this tool on, or use the saw on, you know, three and a half, four inch diameter pieces of wood. But when I did, I said, you know, I'd just go for it, I'd try it. And, you know, this thing does a good number on pieces of wood that are even larger than you'd expect. And I think that that's probably the biggest distinguisher and one of the largest driving forces for me going with the Gomboy over something like the Baco Laplander is the fact that this tool here can take on larger pieces of wood without much larger a blade. So this blade is probably only about in a half inch longer than the Baco Laplander's blade, but yet I find myself taking on pieces of wood that are, you know, an inch, inch and a half larger than what I would have normally taken on with the Baco Laplander. And that to me is probably the biggest win because anytime I can have a tool that can take on bigger pieces of wood, or you know wood that I couldn't have normally used with previous tools uh, that is a big win for me and I think that that is the biggest driving force to the Gomboy is that it is just an incredibly useful tool 
and that it can do a lot of work very fast as well. Um, the tools never felt bogged down in the wood and <clears throat> you do have to be cautious with it in fairness. You know, you have to be mindful that you aren't bending or twisting the blade because this blade is a harder steel so it is more prone to snapping. However, I think a lot of people exaggerate that problem and once again, it is a problem. It's not a good thing to have with your blade but people, I think, by and large, over-exaggerate it and overplay that. Like I said, so long as you're cautious and you're mindful of that, I don't really think there's a problem. I mean, it's similar to, you know, a case could be said that axes such as the GBA or the Holtzbrook or Wetterlings, you know, if you drive them into the ground, you could chip the blade. And that's not really a fault of the blade. It's just something you have to be mindful of. It's something that you have to be aware of. It's something that, you know, you have to purposely make sure that when you're swinging your ax or your hatchet, you know, the follow through isn't into the dirt because you don't want to chip the blade. And so similar to that, you know, you have to have this kind of uh, mindset and this you know, thought in the back of your mind, this awareness that, you know, you don't let the blade bend because you could snap it. Now, in fairness, it hasn't been super fragile for me. I have bent this thing a little bit. And you can see, you know, this thing isn't just like a piece of glass. It's not going to just break, but you do want to be aware of its weaknesses. So anyways, this is my experience with the Gomboy. This one, like I said, is curved. I think the curve gives you a little bit more of an advantage because of how the pull stroke works. So obviously, you know, when you're pulling, this blade is naturally feeding those teeth in and it, it just bites really deep. And so that is, I think, the advantage of the curved. And I was a little bit hesitant to go with the curved blade, but I am glad I did. I have not had any problems with the 210 curve and uh, it works really well. And not to mention the uh, cuts that this uh, saw leaves are very clean, very smooth, and I mean, that's how it got its name, Silky Saw. So, anyways guys, that is my experience with the Silky Gomboy 210. Like I said, this one's curved. I would highly recommend them. Very grippy, very ergonomic, and the biggest downside is their cost. They are not super cheap. They range anywhere from about $35 for the more basic, you know, uh, large tooth models to, you know, more close to $50 if you're going to get something a little bit more specialized like the curved blade. But overall, you know, these are tools that I think people get caught up in the price really easily and really fast. But when you consider things like my Silky Big Boy here, which, you know, costs about $65, this guy, you know, I've had for about four years, and, you know, a lot of these saws, you're not just going to get them, use them for a year, and then throw them in the garbage can. You're going to get these things, and so long as you take care of them, and like I said, you're not trying to break them, um, you're going to use them for years and years. So, anyways, guys, that is all for now. God bless, and I'm out.